we do a mic check, please? Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ducks Limit Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Jennings. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Brazier. My name is John Gordon. I'll be your host. And I'm your host, Katie Burke. Welcome to the Ducks Unlimited Podcast, the only podcast about all things waterfowl. From hunting insights to science-based discussions about ducks, geese, and issues affecting waterfowl and wetlands conservation in North America. The DU Podcast, sponsored by Purina Pro Plan, the official performance dog food of Ducks Unlimited. Purina Pro Plan, always advancing. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ducks Limit Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Jennings. Joining me on the show once again today is John Pullman. John, what's going on, man? Hey, just getting ready for duck season here in South Dakota. Happy to be with you. Awesome. I know you guys are right on the doorstep right now. Um, I wanted to bring John on. John is a contributor to Waterfowl 360. He writes the migration alerts for ducks.org. Uh, if you're not subscribed to those, subscribe to ducks.org or go to ducks.org forward slash migration alerts. Subscribe to those. You'll get everything that John puts out, putting out some great information. What we've got here is we've got a little preview for the Great Plains states, the Dakotas, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma. John just got this out, just went out today. Uh, so, John, let's go ahead and break this down real quick. Uh, before we get to anything else, I do want to touch on the fact that South Dakota is open or will be open soon, and it, the youth hunt was last weekend. John, how did your youth hunt go? How'd your boys do? <laughs> you know what? So it was my first duck hunt for my son, Miles. Awesome. And um, we, yeah, we found a uh, found a little piece of public ground that had just a boatload of teal on it. And so um, there's a kind of a hoof in. It's about a half mile hike in with waders and decoys and, you know, doing it the old fashioned way. So he was a little tired. I'm not going to lie. He was a little tired by the time we got out there. But about <laughs> six, seven minutes before shooting light, here they come, right? Um, birds just started landing in front of him, and then, then it was game on. And so he shot and ended up shooting a six teal, a mix of green wings and blue wings, and it took us about 15 minutes. Uh-huh. I mean, in terms of scripting a first hunt, I don't know if it could have gone any better. And so the way out, even though it was the same distance, I think he had a little more fun on the walk out than he did on the way in. So Absolutely. great hunt. Saw lots of birds. Now, just for reference, how old is he again? He's 12. He's 12. So okay. he just completed, yeah, he just completed his hunter safety course uh, for South Dakota with Game Fishing Parks here last spring. And so that means now that I can I can have a gun with him uh, when he goes out. Now he's a, he's a licensed hunter. So it's uh, his first first real season of hunting and I'm, I'm pretty stoked. So he wants to go out again. That's a good sign. Now, now the problem is, now you're going to have to deliver those 15 minute limits <laughs> every time. I know, we kind of, I know, <laughs> we may have set the bar a little high for a first hunt, but... Yeah. You know, it's, um, I remember my first duck hunt and I, I shot almost, I shot over a box of shells and I didn't bring a duck home. So, you know, he's going to have a memory like I have my own memory and over time, hopefully he will, he'll come to recognize that we don't shoot our limit in 15 minutes each time. But it was a great way. Yeah, great way to start the day. He, you know, we just a lot of teal. He missed some pintails. We um, we saw some mallards. The best flock of mallards of the day. He had knocked down a teal that it was getting away in the brush, and so I had the dog over working on it. And when I left the blind, I can't have a gun, you know, because it's a youth owner. Mm-hmm. But I told him, I said, don't shoot at anything. Let me. I want to be here in the blind, you know, when when you're doing that stuff. So don't shoot. I'm gonna go work work our dog over here, work buddy on this bird, and I'll be right back. And so as I'm doing that. Um, buddy gets the bird. We're walking back and here the best flock of mallards of the day, literally hovering over them at 10 yards. Oh. I can see a couple of green heads in there that you know, they're already, their chests are already cut a little bit. You could tell they're drakes. And he looks at me, he looks at the ducks. He looks at me and he didn't fire. So to his credit, <laughs> yeah, his, that's he exactly right. Yeah. He followed the rules. He didn't follow the rules, but it was the best flock of ducks of the day and he didn't shoot. So but there'll be more of those. Yeah, that's awesome. That is that is a yeah. great story and that's a great way to kick off the season, which makes absolute sense because when you were sending the preview in and I'm kind of waiting on it to get there and I'm like, man, I'm I'm curious, you know, how this outlook is gonna be because you are hearing there's yeah. uh, there's some water in the Dakotas, but it got dry and then it you know got wet and yeah. uh, you know, things were kind of up in the air and, and I was like, oh man, I don't know if this is going to be 
that great news. And sure enough, it came in. You were pretty optimistic. I think everyone yeah. was across the board. So now I, I <laughs> feel like that that youth hunt maybe carried over into this alert a little bit. You're a little more optimistic. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're probably just thinking about the big picture. There's probably three main storylines, right? A century flyaway for this year. And, um, you know, last year was really dry. North Dakota, parts of South Dakota, extremely dry. Over the winter, we had significant snowpack, right? And so we came out of winter into spring with some snow on the ground. A surprising amount of that went into the ground, though. We were so dry. And so there wasn't maybe as much snow melt as we thought there was going to be. But kind of the main, the first main storyline, though, is that we picked up some rain, both North Dakota, South Dakota, maybe not so much Canadian side of the, of the, of the Prairie Pothole region, but in North Dakota, South Dakota, we picked up rains in May, June, and July. Just, it seemed like it was just perfect timing for the birds. And so, and not only the timing of it, but where that rain fell. And so areas that where we have some of the best remaining habitat left in North America, it, it caught these rains at the right time. And so it benefited um, I think ducks like pintails, mallards that are early nesters that it benefited them so also some re-nesting efforts. And then late nesting species like um, blueing teal gaddies, things like that. I think it just caught them at the right time. And so we are, we're seeing it already, not only in the teal that we saw a youth opener, but you know, those early migrants that have already moved out of here. I know people down south have picked up a lot of birds, a lot of teal and some pintail stuff like that. But then you just drive around and you look at wetlands right now and Chris, it looks good. I'm not going to lie. It, it, the wetlands that where you, where you're finding some water, there are ducks out there. And so main one storyline, top of the page story is that duck production in South Dakota, North Dakota this year is pretty good. And, you know, a lot of anecdotal evidence of it from my observations. Um, had a buddy who hunted sharp tails in north central North Dakota here a week or so ago. Told me he's he's never seen duck numbers on the wetlands and sloughs like he did this year. And so, yeah, the writing on the wall right now is is that South Dakota, North Dakota, we had a really good year of duck production. So that's the first main big storyline. So that should have people excited. Absolutely. I mean, you got those duck producing areas there. When you get good news out of that, that's that's always positive. You know, we have already discussed and referenced the brood survey that. North Dakota Game mm-hmm. Fish put out, you know, that was good news for Mike Szymanski, which you mentioned in your alert. Um, but also you talked to South Dakota biologist, uh, chief waterfowl biologist, actually, Rocco Murano, and mm-hmm. he was very optimistic as well. So, you know, and, and to be honest, I know some people don't probably rec- realize this, but it's it's very difficult to get some of these biologists to be so optimistic. You know, a lot of times they're like, ah, we'll see, you know, oh, we never yeah. know. You know, they don't want to commit to anything, but, you know, it seemed like everybody's confident right now in, in at least North Dakota and South, South Dakota are confident in the fact that they're going to be pumping out some ducks. For sure. Those guys will there on the side of caution. They will, because mm-hmm. they don't want to, uh, they don't want to paint a picture that's not realistic. And so when you, when you, get them to commit to saying that things look pretty good. I think things are pretty good. Yeah. So, so yeah, duck production, North Dakota, South Dakota, big storyline there. Storyline number two that I was thinking of not as positive, and that's just that dry conditions in, you know, some of our mid-latitude states. So, yeah. Nebraska in particular just continues to fight some really, really dry conditions. They caught some rain over the summer. Um, talking to John McKinney, he's the senior waterfall biologist for the state. You know, they caught some rain in the sand hills, which is their kind of their duck production area. And so water levels out there are improved, but you know, the rainwater basin, which is a key migration stopping point for birds dry, it's a lot water levels there are pretty low. And so, you know, and then that continues on into parts of Kansas and Oklahoma as well, right? There are, there are, spots where they've they've gotten some good precipitation but overall the whole landscape you know those those great plain states could use some some moisture and so that's kind of the second storyline that i had in my head is that you know good news in the dakotas but things get dry on the flip side of that though is that you know the 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 managers waterfall managers that i've talked to in the flyway kind of all agree though that there's been some really good response in terms of moist soil production Mm -hmm. so there are you know on some of these managed areas state areas things like that um where they you know where they're growing smart weed and other moist soil plants they've had good growth the food is out there and so what it turns into now is just kind of a waiting game watching some of these storms and cold fronts that come through that may bring some rain watching to see where that precipitation falls because 
because it would be a game changer for you know, for folks in Nebraska, and it would create a bunch of opportunities. I think in Nebraska, and excuse me, in Kansas and Oklahoma as well, if they could just get some water on the ground. Yeah, you know, Kansas is that story's been going on for quite some time now. I know we we discussed it last year. Some of the larger public areas there, you know, Cheyenne Bottoms, Jamestown, you know, they they were dry all year last year. You know that just didn't have the water and just going through your report here you know it seems like they are also pretty optimistic that like you mentioned if they do get the water they're going to have some really really good habitat to hold birds yep the food is there they just need that they need some water and there you know you you check out these different wildlife areas and and you can Kansas has great resource online in terms of checking for water levels and things like that. And so you can go online and look at those things. Um, you know, and you you notice that they they have some water ground. They've been able to put some water on, but you know, it's just that there's a small difference between, you know, kind of that there's a fine line be- between, you know, having a, having enough to put some water on the ground and then having that water level that is really going to help um, attract and hold birds as they're moving south. And so I think that if you are a hunter in Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, that's what you're watching here the next month or so is just to see if we get that precipitation, any rainfall, um, and then obviously watching up here to see what kind of weather happens in South Dakota, North Dakota, push the birds that we have up here south. So it's, you know, it's a waiting game like it normally is, but I think overall there are a lot of reasons to be optimistic for the fall. Awesome. That's exciting. And speaking of being optimistic, you know, you're kicking your season off Saturday, correct? Yeah, two days. Yep. Oh, man. Two days from today. So we're, yeah, we're getting close. Yeah, I, I'm kind of panicking inside right now thinking that if duck season was two days away and what I'm not prepared for right now, <laughs> man, it, I'd, I'd be scrambling. But, uh, you know, what, what's your approach going in? I know last year we brought you on, we kind, you kind of talked about really having to work to find you know, suitable water, you know, in huntable water, really. What's the difference this year? You know, those those mud flats that you find around the wetlands, they're still there in, in large part. You know, things were dry enough that you are, you're still going to battle that. Um, you know, the youth opener with my son, Miles, we just, we had about 10 yards of mud. So we went and picked kosher, you know, just big, tall, sturdy weed from uh, from that back behind the grass. We just kind of be a makeshift blind. That kind of approach, I think, is going to be something that if folks are looking to hunt water, they're probably going to need to do have some sort of a an a-frame or some sort of a mobile blind that they can put on that mud flat uh, layouts whatever it may be just so you can close the gap to the water's edge um so that's one approach the other is that you know because we've caught some rain yes but it's also been dry enough that farmers the harvest is 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 you know trucking along right now soybeans are starting to come out small grains are all out people are still kind of on the tail end of, of the silage season but they're cutting corn for silage and so there are a lot of field opportunities out there right now and so that's what i'm focusing on that's my scouting right now is finding that those areas of water and then if i can't be on the x even getting close enough right now um with a small grain field or a silage field and maybe try to run some traffic on birds that are running in between usually there's enough hunting pressure uh the first couple of weeks of the season where birds are up and moving around and so if you can get in a spot where you catch their attention just be visible um you stand a pretty good chance of uh trafficking birds even here in the early season so that's my approach right now um i'm gonna try to stay away from water if i can just because it's a little bit harder and, and concentrate on fields so nice. that's, what, can, we're, that's what we're gonna try to do are you looking for geese as well or are you focusing primarily on ducks well, i won't turn down a honker hunt uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you find one yeah. um, you know the, i won't turn it down but i think we're uh, i'm hoping this opening weekend here in a couple of days my hope is to be is to be on ducks just because that's my favorite so yep. all right man that is fantastic good news again if you're not getting the migration alerts that john and other freelancers contribute to ducks.org um, please check out ducks.org forward slash migration alert you'll find all the information there to sign up by email via text you can get the information to you it's flyway base you don't have to get them all if you don't want to but you can um, once again john thanks for joining us on the show and we'll probably have you back on here soon to do another kind of an update as hopefully some of these areas get the water that they need absolutely sounds great thanks chris i'd like to thank my guest john pullman who does all the migration alerts for ducks.org you can check those out at ducks.org forward slash migration alert i'd like to thank our producer chris isaac getting the show together and putting it out to you i'd like to thank you the listener for joining us on the du podcast and supporting wetlands conservation Thank you for listening to the DU Podcast, sponsored by Purina Pro Plan, the official performance dog food of Ducks Unlimited. Purina Pro Plan, always advancing. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show and visit ducks.org slash DU Podcast. Opinions expressed by guests do not necessarily reflect those of Ducks Unlimited. 
Until next time, stay tuned to the Ducks. Stay tuned.